guy could be league wide because the evidence shows no, he can't. Um, you talk about uh, a Julian Edelman. You talk about a Chris Hogan who are in the Super Bowl right now, doing amazing for the Patriots and out there exampling what you're saying. Hey, these guys deserve more touches, more value, uh, more opportunities. No, they don't. They do in New England, not outside the league. Here's the examples. There have been two cases that raised their hand and said, you know what, let me test this free agency. Uh, let me be out there on a different team and let's see my value. Latest example was Danny Amendola. Anybody? Danny Amendola. Hello, hello, <laughs> hello. Sucker. Dude went out there with the Miami, <laughs> put up 500 yards and one touchdown. Oh, Ryan would Tannehill. You, would, you, would you? Oh, Ryan Tannehill. Okay, well, let's go. I'm glad you said that because there was one great by the name of Wes Welker. Wes Wes Welker, the same one that was with the, the, the Chargers and the Dolphins, went to New England, what, in seven years, had five, six years, 1,200-plus yards? Insane. Wes Welker, next level household name. Decides to go, let me go to uh, the Indy, uh, no, Denver Broncos. Who was the quarterback then? And they went, Ryan Tannehill, who was it? Who was it? Hey, man, I don't know. Yeah, it was a issue. No, 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 not yeah, this year. Not, not this year. Not the first year he got there. You know what happened? He got with Peyton Manning, who was a league MVP, threw 55 touchdowns and 5,500 yards. You would think Wes Walker, oh, he really about to eat, right? Production dropped in half. You know why? Because you ain't in New England, bro. You a system player. Uh, as you're talking about the white slot receiver of New England, stay white slot in New England. And as soon as you leave that system, not one person has shown that they can go out there and be a number one in any other system. I say change your system and find you a Cooper Cup the same way Sean McVay, the next Bill, uh, Bill Belichick, has done and Jared Goff had great success with him. These guys are undervalued. This league has changed. The way they play offense has changed. Taking the top off the defense, I just don't think is as important. Well, for, for me, I was a slot receiver, and so I always thought we were undervalued when I was playing. <laughs> so, <laughs> and you're back. <laughs> but you, you go to New England, I 100% agree. This, this only works in New England. Cooper Cup now, worked very well out here in Los Angeles. This only is going to work in New England. But if you look at it, they had Troy Brown mm -hmm. before these guys. Then they had Deion Branch. Then it became the white receiver with Wes Welker and Julian Edelman. I trained with Julian Edelman when I was playing. Julian Edelman almost had me kill myself at times because I didn't want him to outwork me. That's how hard he worked. He can play. I take nothing away from him. But these guys, the common denominator is number 12. That's why they have success, is because Tom Brady is throwing on the ball. They're smart enough to understand what the defense is doing. They know how to sit in zone. They know to run away in man. They know where the guys are supposed to be defensively, so they know what they're going to do on offense. Tom knows they know this, and they they basically looking at the game from the same set of eyes. That's why they have this type of success. Cole Beasley, you had 65 catches last year. That's not a bad year for a slot receiver. If Amari Cooper isn't getting the ball, Jerry Jones should be saying something. He should be telling him Amari Cooper needs to get the ball. I understand your gripes, but Marcellus is 100% correct. I don't These guys he... aren't working. If Julian Edelman, he was a free agent. Mm. I wouldn't say New England lowballed him, but he didn't get paid per se because his value to other teams is not the same as it is in New England. Well, usually what would happen is the teams that we played against, the players that gave us problems were players that were targeted in free agency. And Wes Welker came up because the head coach had been hired. I gave y'all problems. What happened with me? <laughs> <laughs> Get him, TJ. <laughs> so Wes Welker comes up, uh, is a casualty of a new head coach, and, and he, he had given us tons of problems in, in Miami, and then he was brought in the system and had tons of success, and he went... He moved on much later in his career, so I think it was a, a different time frame. There had been a lot of production in between that, a lot of hits, a lot of, a lot of mileage on those tires. I don't think it's a function of, of black or white or any of that stuff. Troy Brown was very successful in that system as well. The, the, the idea of a slot receiver being a, a number one receiver, it, it's hard to, to push that forward because you want a number one receiver to play outside or inside. You want a number one receiver to be able to be effective at all different points along the line of scrimmage where those slot guys typically can only play in that area. When you try to push them outside, they're not the same guy. In, in terms of Cole's argument, I think it hurts us for agency when, when you start talking about I wasn't targeted enough. Mm -hmm. Is there some truth to that? 
Yeah, there is some truth, and, and you know this too, that offensive coordinators will design plays for certain guys, especially high-maintenance guys. That's a lot. But that's, yeah, that's more than a three, lot of that was that's early. more than three a game. That was early before Amari <clears throat> Cooper got there. And Cole Beasley's point again, Cole Beasley, who knows if he could go to New England or, or maybe he's audition or trying to campaign to get to Pittsburgh. Like, get A.B., let me be the slot receiver for Big Ben. Who knows what kind of success he would have. I just think the game has changed, and you can't remove color from this. The game has changed that the slot receiver is just a lot more valuable than he used to be. And that's what I think. When I look at what Cole Beasley's trying to say and why he's trying to raise his hand and draw attention to himself and why he wants people to talk about what New England is doing, what Cooper Cup did before he got hurt, what Eric Decker did in Denver with uh, Peyton Manning, he's trying to get people to understand the slot receiver position is far more valuable than it had been in the previous NFL when you just set a Randy Moss outside and that was the end-all, be-all. That's just not the case anymore with this spread offense. Well, you know what? Uh, numbers speak louder than words in football. So, you know, Cole Beasley, I understand the PR campaign right now, but the numbers don't say anything in terms of you being the number one wide receiver or we should appreciate you more. One, the Dallas Cowboys were losing games this year when he was the number one wide receiver. Two, if you want to look at him in terms of being the number one wide receiver, Odell Beckham Jr. and Antonio Brown would get cut if they put up Cole Beasley's best numbers, which if you want to look at his best numbers with five touchdowns, 800 yards, that's cut bait for Odell and Antonio Brown. If it ain't cut bait, it's pay cut check pay bait. Cut. You're for sure taking a pay cut. Yeah, but so what, let's, what but we let's go on? deeper into his point, which is also true that Eric knows this as a head coach, and y'all know it as players. The front office does sit there and say, hey, man, we paying this oh, dude 100%. Oh, yeah. a yeah. lot of money. 100%. So his numbers better justify it. Cole Beasley, that's part of his point. Yeah, you can look at Antonio and Odell Beckham, but are they bending over backwards to get these guys the ball? Are they 100. throwing to him in double coverage? Are they doing things that compromise the but team's success? But they're doing success? that because they've shown... Hmm. That it warrants that. No, no, no. It, it, not yeah, not they always, TJ. Yeah. They're doing it because they complain you, so much. Yes. That they come in and they're not getting the ball. But this and is the thing, Coach. That you, too. If it's like you raise a kid. When you get these guys that start getting attitudes, if you nip it in the butt right now, it's over. But as soon as you start letting them do it, it it's no going back. And Once that's you the give AB $70 million, there's no going back. No, there's Once you give Odell Beckham Jr. that money, there's no going back. What Cole Beasley's trying to say, and what I'm saying is, some people around the look at New England. Their receivers aren't divas. The Los Angeles Rams don't have any divas. The ball goes where it needs to go for the what's best for the team. You get these diva receivers, and you overpay them. They start complaining. The front office starts, man, we're paying this dude a lot of money. And the next thing you know, you're doing things that don't make sense in terms of wins and losses. It makes sense in terms of dollars and cents and shutting this person up. It's, it's interesting that we have two discussions going on. One, are you deserving of top dollar, which I don't think you're saying Cole Beasley is, is I'm deserving, say, right? I'm I say, hope not. No, no. What I'm saying is not. Cole Beasley's point is if y'all played the right system, what New England's doing, I'm still have value. He even said in but here. But everybody he, can't be he, Tom Brady. He That's even, the problem. People can run that system. Jared Goff and Los Angeles are mimicking it right now. Yeah, but Cooper Their Cup, whole culture. let's not exaggerate Cooper Cup either. Like, Cooper Cup is amazing at what he does, but we have a limit. We have a, a cap of expectations for you. Cooper Cup has not broke 1,000 yards. Cooper Cup hasn't had over six listen touchdowns. To my, so, listen to my point and, and Cole Beasley's deeper point that we didn't get to. Okay. He said it wasn't about money. He said in his tweets, it was. he's not complaining about it. What is it about? He, Opportunity? He's talking about use the right system. Look at the Rams' culture. And Todd Gurley saying, you know what, I didn't even deserve to play. I wasn't playing that well. That's a mimic 
of the Patriots. But theoretically, let's start doing things that are best for the team but and not for the individual. And these diva wide receivers drive a lot of the negative energy and doing what's best for the individual rather than the team. Cole Beasley's trying to say, I'm one of these guys like Edelman and Hogan. I'm going to do what's best for the team. I have value. But technically, yeah. but technically, uh. technically, if you think about what you just said, yeah. that is about money because he wants more targets, which will in turn yeah, right. make him more, more money Thank you. because he will have more statistics. Yeah. Wants money. And it's so here, it's, it's about that. If when you get 87 targets in one season, that's that's a lot. And what, and what, that, what that's a, that's a what lot. What was the mantra? But, uh, what was the narrative about the Dallas Cowboys before Amari Cooper got there? The receivers can't get separation. That included you, Cole. And Dak Prescott said, "We don't need a number one receiver until they got one. They needed and a number they, one receiver. And then they were eight and three with that number one wide receiver. It's just amazing to me uh, being a backup for three of my first years in the league. It's amazing when you do a little." but expectations are low, they make that seem like it's a lot. So I would play 15 plays, and then let me luck up and get a sack. Oh, my God, why he's coming, why he's coming. Then I went out there and started. And let you only get, like, a sack here or there. They're like, oh, man, get the money back. And you're like, wait a minute. My numbers are still better than when I was in there in these little doses. This, you got to understand, it's, it's, it's this kind of fluctuation in expectations. And Kobezi, Love the fact that you have cover because of your expectations. They're low. If you ever got into a number one mindset and a number one expectation, Cole Beasley will be jumping team from team because there's no way that he can go out there and put up those numbers. But in, in fairness to Cole Beasley, he has a higher catch percentage than Julian Edelman does. So he's targeted. He's got a 70-plus percent catch percentage, which is higher than, than Edelman. So he would have, based off that, more catches if he was targeted that much. In terms of the Rams being like the Patriots, I, I don't agree with that at all. There's there's so many guys on that team that would never be part of the Patriots. And and you can say that he said, I, I wasn't playing well and that's okay. Yeah, he's saying that because they won. Hmm. If they had lost, I think it would have been a radically okay, different now, hold on. Different they want me to go, but when about you say they, they got players that wouldn't be on the Patriots, I just start thinking about Aaron Hernandez uh -oh. and, and, and go... I don't know anybody on the rent. Spikes. Albert Hainsworth, mm. LeGarrette Blunt, Ocho Cinco. Mm. You know, mm. I'm a candidate. Yeah, Cole Beasley, he got <laughs> in New England. <laughs> these, these He'll are be one, a household name. Those, those are one-offs. Yeah, and and yeah, when you've yeah. got a locker room that's that's set up a certain way, you can handle one or gotcha. two. Cole right. Beasley, get the Foxborough, bro. Stick around. <laughs> that's true. Later in the show, we'll <laughs> give you our approval ratings for Cole Beasley. And Uncle Jimmy will be here to stir things up. Also coming up. Marcellus will show us the best plays from big guys across football. That dude's dude. Hey!